Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the Bastard Review. This time around I'm looking at ECW's Heat Wave 2000. This event took place July 16, 2000 in the Grand Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles, California. Our first match of the night is Balls Mahoney taking on Sally Graciano. Now, I had no clue that Sal could wrestle, but he does a really nice choke slam on Balls. I also like when he starts to climb the turnbuckle, threatening a dive, and the remaining officials from the opening segment are trying to convince him otherwise. It's a short two-minute match, which makes sense considering the size of both men, but I think they should have toughed it out to the five-minute mark. Not a good show opener, but I have seen worse. I'm going to give this a five out of ten. After that, Simon Diamond, Johnny Swinger, and C.W. Anderson take on Kid Cash, Danny Doring, and Roadkill. As goofy as most of these wrestlers are, they really put on an entertaining match here. You know, I'm not a fan of six-man tags, and this really wasn't given a large amount of time, but the things they accomplished in that amount of time was really impressive. The match started off with some mat wrestling and ended with some near falls. I don't think there was a slow moment in this match. And really, that's the way you need to book six-man tags. If they don't have a lot of time, they need to be frenetic. They need to be fast-paced, and this match delivers that. I hate Cash's gimmick, but here he proves he's a more than adequate wrestler. He does a flawless top rope Hurricane Rana onto Anderson outside the ring, and then later on he does a really nice looking Pele kick onto Anderson. I'd say my favorite move in this match, Cash leapfrogs over Diamond, only to get a spine buster from Anderson, allowing him to go for a pin. It's just a beautiful, seamless move, and it proves that both wrestlers are really good at working together to craft an entertaining match. My one criticism of this is that Cash was upset at CW for attacking Bobby Eaton, one of Cash's favorite wrestlers as a kid, at a recent house show. But instead of getting into Anderson's face, Cash goes after Simon Diamond. To me, that's a lost opportunity, because during the match they kept mentioning Cash's reaction to Anderson's attack. It doesn't take away completely from the match though, and I enjoyed watching it. I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. Up next, Steve Carino takes on Jerry Lynn in a brutal match. About 5 minutes into this, Steve gets busted open and for the remainder of the match, he's a bloody mess. Which I think is both good and bad. It's good because Steve is a really good bleeder. I mean, his whole face is just a crimson mask. It's bad because it happens so early in the match that there's really no dramatic value to it. It's like, oh, he's busted open. Okay, now what? After that, there's very little you can do to make an oh my god moment. So I think they should have saved it for at least halfway through. The story here is pretty simple. Steve is part of the network, the network being quote-unquote TNN. And a while back, Cyrus, who is in charge of the network, offered a position in the group to Jerry. Jerry turned it down, and uh, I guess Cyrus sent Steve to teach Jerry a lesson. The whole network story is modeled around Paul's dealings with TNN. When Paul first signed the contract to put ECW on TNN, he thought it was going to be the catalyst that brought ECW into the mainstream, but unfortunately, it backfired. TNN imposed all of these rules on Paul, limiting what was allowed to be shown and requiring a higher production value than what Paul was used to, but offering little in terms of incentive for Paul to meet those goals. So Paul did what he does best. He created the network and took his frustrations out through that storyline. This match is pretty impressive. It has everything that most dramatic matches have, the ref bump leading to him getting momentarily knocked out, Interference by the heels lackeys, and there are some really nice close finishes towards the end. In fact, the last minute and a half is really exciting. I wish this was for a title, but that hardly ruins the match for me. I highly enjoyed it, and I'm giving this an 8 out of 10. After that, they show a video promotional package about Rhino winning the ECW television title from the Sandman at Hardcore Heaven 2000. Then Sandman cuts a promo about Rhino attacking his wife Lori and facing him tonight in a rematch. 
See, this is what ECW should be doing. This gets me excited for the match later on. Prior to the next match, Dawn Marie joins Joey and Cyrus for the remainder of the night on commentary. And oh my god, she is so gorgeous. And I love the way she talks. Kind of innocent, but with obvious sexual overtones. She just plays a great character. A broken-legged New Jack starts to come down to the ring when he's attacked by Tony DeVito and Angel. Chris Chetty and Nova come out to save the day and we suddenly have a match. It's very one-sided. Tony and Angel aren't very accomplished wrestlers. They're more brawlers. So it's a pretty mediocre tag match. I love Nova's Flash costume and I love how he gives Tony two consecutive pile drivers and then follows it up with a sit-down powerbomb. But outside of that, this is a bare-bones average match. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. Up next, Little Guido takes on Psychosis, Tajiri, and Mikey Whipwreck in a four-way dance. This was a very solid match, but I don't think it was given enough time. It clocked in just over the 11 minute mark, and I really don't think there was enough time to build some excitement. I believe two of the wrestlers were eliminated even before the 5 minute mark. There were some really good moves. Psychosis starts in a moonsault that turns into a guillotine leg drop that I think was a semi-saved botch. Tajiri, I don't know exactly what he does. It looks like an inverted face plant that he turns into a roll-up for a pin. He also does a baseball slide into Guido trapped behind a chair in a tree of woe. That just looks like it's always painful to be the recipient of. A decent match that should have been given some more time. I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. Up next we have Rhino defending his ECW television title against the Sandman. Like I said, this had really good build up. It's got an engaging storyline going on. There was some believable interference and the match even contained some wrestling moves. Granted, they were on a piece of security gate, but they were wrestling moves nonetheless. Yet again, my gripe is time. This match was only given 8 minutes. Maybe if the Sandman didn't spend a good 5 minutes with his unnecessary entrance, they could have had more time inside the ring. I enjoyed it for what it was, a hardcore brawl. I'm giving this a 7 out of 10. After that, Scotty Anton takes on Rob Van Dam in a grudge match. You may know Scotty from his days in WCW where he was known as Scotty Riggs. The story here is that Scotty is one of Rob's oldest friends and was in RVD's corner against Jerry Lynn at Hardcore Heaven until he turned on RVD during the match, costing him the win and joining the network. This was Rob's chance to get some retribution. There's some really good stuff going on in this match. Rob puts Scotty in a gorilla press, then lets him fall to the mat and follows it up with a standing moonsault. One spot I didn't like though was when Scotty bulldogs RVD from the outside mat to the security rail. I thought after a night of seeing everyone dive in some way into the first row, this spot was completely unnecessary. To my knowledge, this was pretty much a one-off match for Scotty as he didn't show up in the next pay-per-view. But the amount of punishment he takes from RVD is really impressive. It drew me in and had me chanting for RVD. I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. Finally, we come to our main event. Just Incredible defends his ECW World Heavyweight title against Tommy Dreamer in a Stairway to Hell match. If you're curious about what that entails, think of a ladder match, only instead of grabbing for the title, you're grabbing a ton of barbed wire. I like that there's a good story going on here, Francine turning on Tommy to join Justin, and Tommy bringing out some equalizers in the form of Jazz and George. It was a brutal match, but in my eyes, it just didn't deliver. Instead of spending most of their time trying to get a ladder into the ring to go for the barbed wire, Justin and Tommy spent too much time out in the audience doing some unnecessary spots. To me, the point should be getting up that ladder to gain advantage over your opponent with that barbed wire. Otherwise, a pretty average brawl and an okay title match, I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10. Overall, ECW's Heat Wave 2000 is a pretty decent show. You've got two great matches, a few decent matches, but it gets bogged down by a couple of things that shouldn't have been on the card to begin with. ECW compilists will already have this in their collection, but even if you're just a casual wrestling fan, there's still a few things here you should check out, and I recommend you giving it at least one viewing. I'm giving this a 7 out of 10. Thank you for listening. Please tune in again to another Vasta review when I review another wrestling DVD in my collection, or anything else that crosses my path.